Hi, Matt here from Media Arts. We're going to take a look at wireless microphones now, um, give you an overview of um, their functions and um, help you have some confidence using them and making sure that you don't have problems like bad audio, weak levels or distortion or pops and clicks in your signal. So when you hire the kit, it should come with four parts. Um, and you can see that we have a transmitter, number seven, here a receiver number seven, and we have two cables. So the first thing is making sure that you have um, the right cable in the right um, body pack device. So the transmitter will be the one worn by your actor. So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually wearing a transmitter, which I will take out here as well. So um, I'll pop that there for now. This transmitter here uh, needs to connect to the microphone here. So these are often referred to as radio mics or body pack transmitters and receivers, but the actual type of microphone is a lapel microphone or a tie clip. So if we look at the top of the transmitter, it's going to zoom in here a bit so we can get a nice clear view. You should be able to see a mic input here. So if you're not sure about which cable to put in which, just think logically, the microphone will go into the mic input at the top of the transmitter there. Whereas the receiver, which is what wirelessly picks up that signal from the transmitter, will be connected to a camera or recording device. And the job of the receiver is to take audio and output it to that recording device. So the other cable that comes with the pack will be a 3.5 mil to XLR and the clue as well here on the receiver is that it's outputting from the receiver into the recording device. So that's how you know which way is which. Also the receiver has a hot shoe on the back um, and this, this section here can actually be removed and you can um, clip it on to a camera um, hand strap if you like. Um, it's a bit fiddly to get in and get out, but um, just ask for help if you need some help there. Right, let's have a deep dive into the microphones and go through the menu system and talk generally about what will, um, what will give you the best possible audio signal from the source into your recording device there. So these microphones are really handy. You can broadcast over quite a range and um, you can also hide them on set. Um, sometimes people hide them in areas near to um, actors, such as plants and um, underneath tables and such. But predominantly, they will be used round about um, the chest region. Um, these are omnidirectional, which means they pick up from all distances um, equally. And sometimes you actually see them upside down on live news, such as BBC. That's because um, they're using cardioid. Um, and they don't want to have that plosive sound come through. So depending on the type of microphone, you might see them oriented in different ways. But I'm just wearing it here. It's, um, I shouldn't touch it because obviously you will hear that noise if I'm touching it on set. Um, here I just have it cabled up through the shirt and it's round about um, in this region here to give a nice balanced sound. If I turn away, um, you might notice that the sound character changes. So just be very conscious of that when you're miking people up um, for a live broadcast or for a sort of documentary scenario, think about which directions they'll be looking in and um, if it's possible that they're looking all over the place, you might want to come up with uh, some more options there. But um, if someone sat next to me on a panel, I'm going to be looking that way most of the time. So if they're wearing a blazer, try and put it on the side that they'll be looking towards, not away. Just bear that in mind. So hopefully um, you can see the screens here. I'm going to turn these on got autofocus on the camera, so it should help me get through this tutorial. Now you may have noticed that when I turned on the transmitter there, a light came on on the receiver to show us that we have a radio frequency. So I'll just demonstrate that again. I'm turning off the transmitter and the radio frequency disappears from the receiver. Now what that means is the receiver is constantly scanning on the frequency that it's set to. Um, and it will just generally pick up nothing or, or low noise until you are um, you're ready to go with the transmitter and then that will start broadcasting on that frequency and it will lock to the receiving frequency there. So you can see the RF light comes on and on the left hand side of the receiver on the screen you've got a nice indication there 
of a healthy RF signal. So that's really handy for checking that the microphones are talking to each other. Um, and that's all fine. Um, so at the moment, um, we're not sending any audio frequency, any AF, through the transmitter to the receiver. So even though the receiver is locked on to the transmitter, nothing is actually happening between the two because we don't have our microphone cable connected. So that would be the, the first thing to do. Um, make sure that you have fresh batteries, by the way. And if you're going for a very important scene with actors who are only there for a few hours, make sure that even after lunch, you've got fresh batteries in there as well. And um, this just pops in here and it securely fastens on so it can't be pulled out. Just take a note as well that there's a mute switch on the transmitter. So that mute switch can be activated without your knowledge and um, perhaps on a break, um, a rest break during filming, it can be muted and then it comes back on set still muted and you're none the wiser. So it does help to have an assistant um, checking all those microphones on the floor um, after breaks as well uh, for batteries and muting. So it's not muted, that's connected there. And all being well, you should now have some AF level appear on the transmitter um, and on the receiver. So now, if I tap this microphone, you can see that the level is appearing on the transmitter to the receiver, and then that should be going into the recording device, such as the camera, um, or even better, a Zoom F4, or a sound device's external recorder, uh, whatever you can get your hands on, preferably a multi-track one. Now, a few things to bear in mind here. Um, it's very important to set the level correctly of the transmitter so that you're capturing audio in the optimal way in what I like to call the Goldilocks zone, um, which is round about, uh, let's say, minus 24 to about uh, minus 12 dB. That's round about where you want to be when you have a loud section of audio. So it's really important to do a sound check um, at the level that your talents will be actually performing at during the, the filming. So it's no good um, just getting a few words if they're going to be roaring and screaming during the performance. You want to actually get the rehearsal um, checked in the microphone so that you're not hitting close to that zero dB point of pain, I like to say. So um, it's called gain staging and it, it applies wherever you've got an audio amplifier. So this refers to the audio signal chain. The very first point in the signal chain is the microphone into the transmitter. And this here, you must set this correctly. If this isn't set correctly, you're going to have distortion on the audio when you listen through the camera or recording device, but you're going to have to figure out whether it's the distortion is being applied here or on the camera. And the way that you know that is just by logical troubleshooting. You always troubleshoot initially at the first point of signal, and then you check to make sure it's not overloading there. Uh, make sure it's roundabout in the sweet spot, like I say, of minus 24 to minus 12. And that roughly translates as around about halfway up the meter, let's just say, for, for this particular device. Um, and then as long as that's not hitting into the 0 dB um, point at the top, that should be okay. Um, then you need to check your receiver. Um, there's another level setting on the receiver, which can attenuate, which is reduce or um, amplify the gain. And the receiver... Um, should not be amplifying that signal past that zero dB point. If it is, that's where your distortion is coming on. So that's the next chain in the signal to check. And then if that's looking good, then you would check your camera or recording device and it's likely that you've got your gain too high there. So it's a logical step-by-step -step troubleshooting to find where the distortion is occurring. Uh, and also remember, very important, at the end of your chain, after you've recorded it, that's where the headphone volume is. So. A very common mistake for people who are starting to record sound is um, it's too quiet in the headphones on the recording device or the camera, and they end up ramping up the gain on the microphone, uh, transmitter, receiver, or ramping up the gain on the recording device or the camera, which is really bad because they're doing that just because it's not loud enough in the headphones. What you should be doing is setting the gain correctly, stage by stage, and then at the end, that's when you adjust your headphone volume on the recording device or the camera menu. So um, there's a very logical distinction there between input gain staging and output headphone volume, and you shouldn't conflate the two. They're, they're very different, so just be aware of that. Um, 
So as long as you um, follow the, uh, the gain staging and make sure that you're setting the signal in the optimal way along the, the chain, you should have really good audio. And it becomes especially important where you have a big dynamic range. In other words, where you have someone, let's say, performing um, an opera aria where they go really quiet and they go extremely loud. You have to be extra careful in those situations. It's all to do with dynamic range. And there's some supporting information on Moodle um, explaining the universal audio principles behind all this stuff. So it's, it's all good learning to know. But for now, back to the lapels. So um, I spoke about that gain level. And where that's set is actually in the menu here. You go in through the set button. By the way, you turn them on uh, on the left button there. And the set button, just here, you press that. Then you've got the sensitivity of the mic. Now, if you do a factory reset on these microphones, um, the sensitivity should, well, on this model, it will go uh, to minus 30 dB as default. And I would say that's a really good starting point to set this at, particularly for my voice. If I have this set at 30 dB, then I know that I can go fairly loud and it's not going to distort, but yet it's strong enough to carry my voice um, without picking up a lot of background noise, because if it's too low, you get a really bad signal to noise ratio. So personally for me, I know that's good. Depending on who is gonna be using the microphone, you might wanna consider changing that. However, as a starting point, I would say minus 30 is good here. And on the receiver, we also have a, um, an audio AF out setting. So um, you can change this. Um, it goes from minus 12 to plus 12, which is mic level to line level. So if your recording device is set to mic level, you can probably put it down to minus 12 and adjust it on the camera. I've got this set here to zero because I've checked and um, I'm happy with this to be set at what we call unity gain, which is it doesn't change the level, it just passes it through to the camera because I know that this level here um, on my receiver where the camera is, is sending through a nice optimal level. And then I've also got the camera set to receive that at an optimal level. So as long as each stage of the chain is set to that optimal level, then you, you should have good audio in terms of the signal to noise ratio. You may also have some other issues um, and it's to do with wireless interference. And this is a subject of much confusion to even people who have been working around sound for, for quite a few years. It's a huge topic and um, Truth be told, I've only ever spoke to one real expert on the topic who is, uh, his name is Tuomo from Sure UK, and he is an absolute expert. Um, but generally speaking, the wireless situation is complex and it changes very frequently because more people are using mobile phones that consume high bandwidth video content, and therefore Ofcom have to allocate more of the radio frequency spectrum to mobile phone usage and other usages um, and the digital uh, spectrum that's available for radio microphones is ever narrowing. So we have less and less room to use our microphones in terms of the frequency settings they're on. And let me just explain that a bit more. When you buy a microphone, <coughs> it is set. The crystals in the microphone are, are set to operate within a certain range. So on the back of this Sennheiser uh, SK100 G3 series, um, we can see that the Frequency range here is a British frequency range in between 606 and 648 megahertz. Now, just be very careful because legally, unless you have a license covering other frequencies, you're only supposed to use these microphones in between 606 and 614 megahertz, which we call channel 38 of the spectrum. So you must have it set between 606 and 614. That is the shared part of the spectrum that is um, available for, um, let's say, people without a license to use on, on set. So that's why all of our microphones that we lend out to you are in between 606 and 614 megahertz. Um, even though you can go beyond that, but you must be licensed above 614. So just be aware of all this stuff. If you're going abroad, that might be completely different depending on whatever country you're going into. So check with us first. We've got some good documentation and information for you. If you're going to specific countries, we need to make sure that you're covered and licensed so um, that you don't get a fine because in theory, people could figure out that you're using uh, a microphone unlicensed and they could fine you. So 
Um, moving on from that, I think we've covered that enough. Um, the microphones themselves, the reason that they can even speak to each other is because they're both operating on the same frequency. And uh, hopefully you can see the frequency there. There's a bit of shine on the screen, but um, I'll just press the button there. And we are on 608.000 megahertz. Both of these, transmitter and receiver, are both set to the same frequency, and that's why they can speak to each other. If they're not set to the same frequency, you won't get ORF on the uh, uh, radio frequency lock on the receiver. Okay, um, so if you have some problems with your wireless gear and you can't really explain why it's happening, in other words, you've checked your gain staging, you've set your gain correctly, you're not getting any, any peaking for the transmitter, so you're not going up to zero dB and causing any distortion or anything, and you're still getting some noise. Well, it could actually be that you've got some uh, noise on the lapel on the microphone capsule head itself. Um, so you really have to make sure uh, before the wardrobe stage uh, completely dresses the talents, you have to really be in there. And um, there's a great video on Moodle, which I'll uh, refer you on to, that shows you all the different techniques of taping a microphone head and cable to talent. And that is really important because so many problems occur when you don't take time proactively ahead of wardrobe to um, make sure that my cable is nice and secured, gaffer taped below the broadcast loop, above the broadcast loop, and then in small triangles in front of and behind the head to cushion it. Um, because it needs to go under clothing and it needs to be protected against skin and the clothing itself. And um, also things like chains, body hair, all these things can destroy your, your sound. And um, you can actually rent in some uh, cost 11, uh, sank in cost 11 heads if you want to um, have, a, have a capsule that's much better um, for hiding on uh, someone's clothes or in their hair or honestly with sound you have to do whatever it takes to get good audio and that sometimes means jumping in ahead of wardrobe, speaking to the director, speak to everyone on set if you need to, just communicate the importance of, of sound and that means communicating and proactively um, getting involved with wardrobe and, uh, and your talent. And any good actors will understand and appreciate that because you're helping them come across better. So that helps them do their job. Okay, so these frequencies are matched. And if they weren't, um, there's different ways of doing that in the menu. Um, well, two ways. One way is by using the frequency presets. So frequency presets are basically banks defined by the manufacturer of different frequencies. And they're just trying to make it a bit easier for you to have the two transmitter and receivers on the same frequency. So, for example, if you're on bank one or uh, yeah, bank one channel one, it'll be set to a certain frequency um, that you don't really need to know because you're just matching the banks and the channels. And the idea is that if you've got a load of like maybe 12 or so mics, you can just put them on different um, channels. Um, and that applies, I believe, to both the transmitter and receiver. Um, you can, you can put them on this frequency preset. So that's one way of doing the frequency. Another way, um, which I prefer, is going into the advanced part of the menu. And this allows you to tune the microphone manually, which is super handy if you've got so many radio mics that um, they don't all fit in the banks and channels um, without getting interference. So this is another way to do it, and um, it's a more precise way of changing the frequency. Um, you can change it by uh, 0.025 megahertz increments. And um, that's round about where you start to get a neighboring uh, frequency interfere with your frequency. So you can actually go pretty tight with these. But it's actually quite complicated um, if you actually scan the frequency environment using the software and uh, a good um, receiver antenna. Um, but, but basically, without going into too much detail, as long as all of your mics aren't interfering with each other or any other um, ORF equipment in the vicinity in the postcode, then you're good to go. You can also name the microphone um, if you want to. Um, perhaps you can name it um, as per your talent, uh, what their name is, um, uh, just to help you keep organized. So what else have we got? We've got auto lock, maybe not a good idea. It's up to you. Um, we've got uh, our name we covered, and we've got our advanced section. Um, we've got some mute options. 
Um, we've got uh, LCD contrast. We can reset it. We can check the software, make sure it's the same as to the receiver. And on the actual receiver, um, the options are more or less the same, except we've got one or two different options. Um, uh, we've got squelch and easy setup. Um, leave that for now. Uh, we do have the option. Um, we can actually uh, sync the microphones using um, ORF sync here. So I, sorry, it's infrared sync, I believe. Um, so that we can set the uh, receiver to a certain figure. Let's let's just try this. I'm going to set the uh, well, rather, I should set the uh, receiver. Let's just see if I can set it to 609 megahertz. Yep. And then I am going to go into the uh, sync option, uh, which I believe was in the advanced part of the menu. And I should be able to, whoops. I should be able to, sorry, I'm in the advanced menu. It's in the basic menu. Um, here we are, sync. So now I hold them together and see if this works. And now you can see that the transmitter is on 609. So super handy if you um, prefer setting the microphones um, in that manner. And then you can see the RF lock comes back on. So uh, syncing is quite handy. Um, I believe that covers most of the theory around the microphones and how to use them themselves. Bear in mind everything I've said there about um, the gain staging, that's super important. And um, be super aware of physically where the capsule is located. And um, like I say, they're omnidirectional capsules, so um, they pick up sound from all around. But the great thing about radio mics is you can get them really close to the source of audio here. So that's going to be a really good signal to noise ratio, especially if someone's projecting properly on set. So um, I'm just going to show you as well that the microphone that I'm using here, it's a different transmitter and I've got it into the, into the camera. Let's see if we can focus up on that there. And you can see that when I'm talking and I'm speaking fairly clearly, it's kind of going between 50% um, of the meter to about 75% depending on how loud I speak. But um, if I make an unexpected loud noise, it's still going to have some headroom there to use up before it's going to distort. So that's really important that you anticipate what sort of levels you're going to have. And it really helps to know a bit about the performance in advance. So um, it's all about information communication and just being organized like any other role. It's just about preparing for things. Make sure you have some gaffer tape as well for applying the microphone on set. And um, that's about it.